Victoria from Florida with her boyfriend who was an aspiring rapper worked at this Dave and Buster's the day she met ex-pro NFL quarterback Steve McNair who was fresh out of retirement at the time of their meeting Sahil was 19 years of age and Steve McNair was 36 years of age. They met here in this sports bar, Dave and Buster's in Nashville, Tennessee, where Sahil worked as a waitress. This is where the story begins of the death of Steve McNair. To Dave and Buster's here in Nashville while I continue to talk to you guys. So as Steve and Jenny's relationship starts to heat up, they go on lavish trips, they go on vacation. And as I mentioned, Steve co-signs with her to purchase the black 2007 Cadillac Escalade. By the time May 2009 comes, Steve starts another extramarital affair with a woman by the name of Leah. By this time, Kazumi is already expecting or she's already thinking that Steve is seeing another woman. One night while on the way to the condo, Kazumi sees another woman leaving the condo. After doing a little bit of research, comes to find out that the woman that Kazumi seen that night was in fact Leah. She went to the police and in the report, she says that a person in a black Escalade was following her when she left the condo. And when she got home, a person in a black Escalade was circling around in her neighborhood. By the time the end of June comes and the beginning of July gets here, Kazumi is completely spiraling out of control. On the morning of July 2nd, 2009, Jenny, Steve McNair, and one of Steve McNair's friends were downtown Nashville. And as they sped away from a club in the Black Escalade, they were pulled over by the police and Jenny got out and did a sobriety test in which she failed and was locked up. The police officer spoke with her during this arrest and she was asking him if Steve McNair was still around and was told that he got into a cab and pulled off. You know, her face was total disgust as she had just found out that Steve and his friend left her to fort the bill. On the morning of July 3rd, things really start to get really out of control for Jenny. Later on in the afternoon of July 3rd, Jenny is at work and at 8.38 p.m. on July 3rd, Kazumi clocks out for her lunch break. She sits in this parking lot right here from 8.38 to 9.16 p.m. I don't know exactly where she sits at in this parking lot. At 9.16 p.m., she gets a call from Andrew Gilliam they meet in this parking lot right outside of Dave and Buster's and this is where she purchases the semi-automatic 9mm pistol somewhere in this parking lot I don't know exactly where but somewhere in this parking lot 
probably not that far from the front door because she probably didn't want to go too far into the parking lot. And I'm pretty sure at 9 p.m. this place probably was still packed because it was July 3rd. So this parking lot was probably still packed that night she purchased that pistol. 9.23, she went back inside and clocked in. So she clocked out, took a break and waited for Gilliam out here in this parking lot and clocked back in at 9.38 p.m. Like I said, I don't know exactly where she purchased the pistol from him at in this parking lot, but this is the parking lot that she purchased that pistol from Andrew Gilliam. Eight thirty-eight p.m. Jenny clocks out for her break and meets up in a parking lot with Andrew Gilliam at nine twenty-six, which she purchased the nine millimeter. Once she purchased the nine millimeter, she clocked back into work, and around ten twenty p.m. She clocked out and she messaged Steve McNair to find out where he was at. A little later on in the evening, she asked Steve McNair. Later on that evening, McNair texts Jenny to ask where she was at. And she mentioned that she was at the condo. So he mentioned to her that he would be there as soon as he put his sons to bed. However... McNair was not at home with his sons putting them to bed. He was at the local watering hole raising his alcohol level. So Jenny takes them back to find out where he was at because he was taking a little bit too long. And he decided to go to another watering hole. About like 12 o'clock a.m., Steve McNair texted Jenny to let her know he was on his way. And she texts back, okay. About 12.45, 1 o'clock, Steve McNair arrives at the condo. He's dropped off in front of the condo once he sees Jenny's Escalade sitting outside right now I am in front of the condo where Jenny Escalade was possibly parked at I don't know where it was parked at but it was right here where he was let off by his friend once he was dropped off his friend seen him go in the house and that was the last time that he saw Steve. Once inside, no one knows what took place, but it's speculated that once inside, Steve McNair sat down on the couch. He probably passed out because he was inebriated. He sat down on the couch and Jenny shot him once in the right side of the temple and then shot him again in the left side of the temple. After shooting him twice in the head, she then shot him twice in the chest, set adjacent to him, so that when she delivers the fatal shot to herself, she'll fall in his lap. However, that's not what happened. They were both found on July 4th, 2009. Jenny was laying on the floor and Steve was sitting on the couch. The incident and the tragedy that took place right here in this condo on that day, July 4th, 2009, started with lies that, that started with lust that became lies and ended with murder. You have been checking out informative classics. Guys, this was a very, very tragic story of the pro quarterback, 
Steve McNair. May he continue to rest in peace. I'll catch you guys in the next one. And hopefully somewhere I have been informative. Peace out. do great things you know they can you can hear the name magna and they say oh yeah they, he's a great kid you know but if you out there making a bad name for yourself and then they hear the name magna they like you know you don't want to mess with him